my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at how you can layer infusible ink sheets. So we're in Design Space and I'm going to show you a few images and how you would go about layering them with infusible ink sheets. So this first one is nice and easy to prepare in Design Space. It's already separated into our layers and because those layers don't overlap, it's going to make life so simple. Not all layers are like that, as we'll have a look in a little bit, but this one's pretty easy for working with infusible ink sheets. With infusible ink sheets, and in fact the pens, you only want to heat the once if you can. The reason being is because there's a whole science around it between liquids and gas and all this kind of thing. Now you can go in with an extra press, however, you do run the risk of actually distorting the colour that you've achieved in your first press and you also run the risk of changing the makeup of your infusible ink so in its first press it will last as long as your item but when you go in for subsequent presses you can actually change that so it may actually affect the longevity so where possible with infusible ink be that sheets or pens or both you only want to press the once if you can now the thing about this one is that we would cut our three layers and then we need to actually move two layers across to one sheet. The problem is, is that you're going to cut around the outside of your layer. So that means that when we try and move our squad and our bubble across, sometimes we don't have the space on our mermaid sheet to be able to do it. So you either need to remember to leave extra room when you're weeding and cutting down your design or you can use an outline box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to grab a square. I'm going to unlock my square and I'm going to make it just slightly larger than my design. It doesn't need to be miles larger. I'm going to come up to the top, arrange and centre back. And I can then just size that up. As I say, it doesn't need to be a whole lot larger than your entire design. Now the mermaid is the biggest part of my design. So that's where I'm going to put my layer box. Because I'd be silly to do it on the bubbles or squad. Because I'd lose this whole area of infusible ink. It would just end up being taken off the sheet. I can reuse it, but you know, it... it makes life a little bit more tricky so if you're going to do a layer box you always want to make sure that it's going to be on your largest layer i'm going to lock my box back up and i'm just going to change the color on it to make it a bit lighter so you can see that my layers are now separated i've now got three layers and i only want to attach my mermaid layer to my box so what I'm actually going to do is on my other two layers, my bubbles and my squad, if we look at them in the layers panel, you'll see they've got a little eye next to them. I'm going to click on that eye to hide them. And what that will do is it'll hide them, but when I bring them back, they're in the exact same position. I'm then going to click on my mermaid layer. On my keypad, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select my box. And you'll see, if we look in our layers panel, that both of those are now selected because they've gone a darker grey. So again, I'm just going to click on one layer, hold my shift key down on my keyboard, and select the other layer. The other option I've got, because I have hidden those two layers, is I can just draw around using my mouse, and if I'm on my iPad, Android, I can just use my finger to draw a box around both of my layers. I'm then going to attach. So if we come down to the bottom of our layers panel, you'll see we've got the option to attach. So what that will do is it will cut out my design and it will cut the box. So when I come to weed, I can weed out the box and I'll have my design there as well. When I then cut out my other two layers, I can then move them from their sheets to this mermaid sheet with the box around it. 
So that's one way in which we can, in Design Space, get our layered infusible ink ready. Now this one is nice and easy to work with. It's already separated into layers. And the great thing is because our layers are at the top and the bottom encase the rest of our layers, we don't need to create a box with this one because they're easily going to sit in this area. So actually with this one, apart from maybe changing the colors or the size, you don't actually have to do anything with it because it's all ready to go. Now this one is slightly different in that the layers are actually sat on top of each other. So rather than sitting within each other, they're sat on top and you cannot layer directly on top of another layer if you're only doing one press or not like if it's like this. What you need to do is create this so that your layers sit within each other. So if we actually ungroup this and we actually pull it apart, you'll see that this layer has to sit directly on top of that one. But there is a nice, easy fix to this. I've already ungrouped it, but actually I could do this grouped. It wouldn't matter with this image because there's only the two layers. So I could keep it grouped, but I've already ungrouped it. So all I'm gonna do is draw around it or as I say, you can select one layer, hold down your shift key and select the other. And at the bottom of our layers panel, we're going to select slice. So what this is gonna do is slice that top layer into that bottom layer. So I can select slice and you'll see if we look at our layers panel, we go from two layers to three layers. I'm gonna hide my layers so that you can see them. So now, I've got that red layer with the love sliced out of it. I've got the love on its own in the red. And then I've got that original black layer. So actually what I want to keep is that original black layer and that red love so that I can sit that within that black heart. So I can put that layer down and then put my love within it. This red layer that we've got here, we can get rid of that. We don't need that now. So I can delete that. And I've got my two layers that will now sit within each other rather than sitting on top of each other. Now this one has got lots of layers. And again, if we look at our layers panel, we can see that they're all solid layers. So they're all going to sit on top of each other which means we will not get that single press. So what we want is to actually sit them inside of each other. It's not just as simple as doing a slice because we have got four layers here. So we need to slice each of the layers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ungroup it because we are working with more than two layers. What we do to two of them will affect the others. So I'm gonna ungroup it And you'll see if we look at our layers panel now, they're all individual rather than grouped together. I'm gonna hide the top two layers. So this love and then this offset layer. So it leaves me with the two bottom layers. Now they are solid. What I actually want is the purple to be an outline so that the pink can sit within it rather than on top of it. So again, I'm either going to draw around it using my mouse or if I'm on an iOS or Android, I can use my finger or I can select one layer in my layers panel, hold down my shift key on my keyboard and select the other and I'm then going to slice. This is where your layers panel really becomes your best friend. So those two layers that we've sliced now become three and they've actually come to the top of our layers panel. So if we bring back those other two, we won't see them because they're sat behind all of this. So I'm just gonna hide those again and we'll deal with that in a second. So you can see I've now got three layers. I've got my solid pink layer, I've got a purple outline and I've got a solid purple layer. If you're ever unsure, just hide your layers 
so that you can have a look and see which ones are going to fit. So I know that if I hide that pink layer and I hide the solid purple, I'll be left with that purple outline. If I then bring back my pink layer, it's going to sit within that outline, just like this purple piece will. I want the pink layer, not that solid purple layer, so I can delete that, I don't need that now. So now I'm left with the outline of the purple layer and my solid pink. My next layer, which is the next outline layer, this love one, it's behind there. So all I'm going to do is unhide the layer by clicking on the eye. You'll see it's selected because it's a grey in my layers panel. I'm going to come to the top, I'm going to select arrange and centre front and that will move it to the front. For ease I'm going to hide that purple outline because now I want to create the slice in these two layers. So I'm working my way up the layers. I've done the two bottom ones, now I'm going to do the two middle ones. So again I can either draw around or I can select one layer and the other using my shift key and exactly the same I'm going to slice. And we're going to end up with three layers again and it's exactly the same as the one we've just created. We've got two solid pieces and an outline piece. So if I bring back that purple outline and I then hide my two solid pieces, you'll see that we've actually created another outline. So the outline that we've just created will sit within our purple outline and then our dark pink outline will sit within there. And then this one, we can obviously get rid of that because we don't need it. So you can see how this is starting to take shape and how these are all going to sit within each other. We've then got our last layer. Again, if I unhide that, it's now underneath all of this. So again, we're going to come to the top. We're going to go arrange and centre front. And again, it's going to sit on top of this layer here. We don't want that. We want it to sit within. So nice and easy, we're just going to hide our two outline layers. So we're left with these two solid layers. Nice and simple again, we're just going to either draw around or we can individually select the layers by holding down our shift key on our keyboard and we're going to select slice. Again, we end up with three layers. So if I bring back my purple and my light pink outline and I then hide this solid layer at the top here and this solid layer here, you'll see once again I've created an outline. So I've now got one, two, three layers of outlines and I've got two layers that are exactly the same. So one is in this colour and one is in the darker colour. This lighter colour, I can delete that and this darker colour, I can keep. So if I actually hide each of those layers and I bring them back one at a time, you can see how they're now going to sit within each other rather than on top of each other. And that's the key with infusible ink layering. You want everything to sit within each other. You don't want it to sit on top of each other. The only time that changes is if you're using pens and we'll do that in a separate video. For now, we're just looking specifically at layering sheets. So if we bring all four back, you can see we've got our two images of layers that sit within each other. And then we've got these images where the layers are already separated but we've made sure that we can move all of them from their individual sheets onto one background sheet. I'm going to cut each of these out and I'm going to show you how 
we create the layers actually physically and then how we're going to press. We're going to do four separate presses. We're going to do a mug press one. We're going to do a hat press. We're going to do a makeup bag and then we'll do another fabric item as well. Now when we go through to the next stage, it's the same. So it doesn't matter what your image is, if it's layers within layers, if it's one layer of infusible ink, if it's pens, it doesn't matter. From this point on, until we've actually cut out our infusible ink or we've drawn with our infusible ink, it's all the same, no matter the image, no matter what you're making. So if we go to make it, we're going to select on a mat. I'm using my Maker 3 today. And we're going to mirror each of our designs. So whenever you're working with infusible ink sheets or infusible ink pens, you want to ensure that you mirror them. So that's really, really important. And you can see that we've got all four of our layers. And it will be the same with all of those designs. We'll make sure that we mirror each of the layers. I'm going to connect to my Maker 3. And for all three layers, I'm going to choose Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet. Now, it's already saved to my favourite. However, if it wasn't, all I would do is go to Browse All Materials. And if I was using the Air 2 or one of the original Explores, all I would do is set my dial to Custom Materials and I then get a screen like this and I can browse all materials. And I'm just going to type in INF for infusible ink and you'll see it comes straight up with infusible ink transfer sheet. And I'm gonna use that setting for each of my layers. So I just wanna go over some of the basics for infusible ink. So we've got an infusible ink sheet box here. There's four sheets in here. I'm just going to open it up and it's really important that you try and keep the box intact if you can and there is a reason for this. A, it's easy to store and B, you want to keep it because it will keep your infusible ink nice and protected. When we open it up, you'll see our infusible ink is in this plastic sheeting. Again, we want to try and keep this if we can. Now in the sheets, you'll find your infusible ink, you'll find butcher paper, which is Cricut's equivalent of parchment paper. So you can use either the butcher paper or you can use parchment paper. Also Cricut are releasing sheets of butcher paper. It's already in the States, it'll be here in the UK by the start of May. They're 12 by 12 sheets, you get 15 sheets in a pack and they will retail at £6.99 it's well worth getting them. Now the thing about butcher paper parchment is that it is a one-time use. So you do find that you do go through it. Also in here, you'll find a silica gel pack. You definitely want to keep this. And you'll find a piece of fabric to test and kind of play with. Now what I do with my sheets is I do not put a whole roll onto a mat. I cut it down to the size I need. The reason being is that once it's been on the mat, it can kind of pucker a little bit and that will affect your future cuts. So you only want to put what you need onto your mat. Now, when you've finished with your infusible ink, you're going to put it back in its black packet if you can. And sometimes I find that you do have to really roll it back up, put it back into its sleeve that can go back in the box and you want to put the silica gel back in there as well because it'll stop any moisture getting to it. At the very least, if you can't get it back in its protective packaging, you want to put it back in its box. Infusible ink should not be left out in the elements, so it shouldn't just be left around your craft room. It definitely doesn't want to be left in front of sun because it will bleach away that colour. Equally, not so much with the pattern sheets, but with the plain colour sheets, if your hands are really sweaty, so you're in a really hot environment, you can end up with fingerprint marks all over the sheets. So do try and make sure that your hands are just a normal temperature. You don't want to handle infusible ink if your hands are really sweaty. So I always use my Cricut trimmer, and I use that to cut down my sheet to the size that I'm going to need so that I'm not putting any more of it on my mat than I need to. 
we're going to use a green standard grit mat I'm then going to use my brayer to make sure that that's nice and secure we've already mirrored in design space but with infusible ink sheets you always want to make sure that it's colour up so I use a premium fine point blade for infusible ink I do have a separate blade for infusible ink the reason being is that infusible ink is quite fibrous it's quite kind of cardboardy paperish through here so you do end up with lots of fibers on your blade then if you're cutting other cardstock iron on which has got that sticky layer vinyl which is sticky it can really blunt your blade so I have a separate blade for infusible ink To remove my infusible ink, I'm going to turn my mat over and I'm just very gently going to remove that and you want to move your mat around as you're removing it because you do not want to over bend your mat. To weed my infusible ink, I'm actually going to come in and I'm just going to crack it all the way around where it's cut and you will hear it crack. And then I'm literally just going to peel. And this excess I will be able to use again and I'll show that in another video. But there we go, I've got our first layer. So there's two ways in which you can actually layer these. So you can move one to the other. The first is if you've got something that's a complete kind of image like this, you can literally take it off the carrier sheet and then manually place it where it needs to go and I find using my lint roller again really helps with actually allowing that to stick to the other layers carrier sheet however when you've got extra pieces or you've got little pieces or you've got text that you want to keep exactly as it is manually moving that is not going to be easy no matter what the infusible ink sheet is no matter what it's going on so a mug a hat a t-shirt the way that you layer is all the same so it doesn't matter what it's going on this process is always going to be the same so you can manually move it or you can use some press and seal so this is available kind of globally it's fantastic stuff it's generally used for food but it's great for this because it hasn't got the tack of transfer tape which will take off your infusible ink sheeting this is great because it's strong enough to move it it's not strong enough to take away that color so I'm just going to get myself a bit of roll that is large enough for my design and one side is sticky and the other is not we're going to use the sticky side place that down I'm going to use my brayer just to get that transferred roll it over I'm going to peel back my carrier sheet on my infusible ink and if I think that when I lift it up I'm going to have a few pieces fall off again I can just use my roller you don't want to come in and really kind of roll that but just give it a little roll just to keep it in place I can then get this one into its correct placing and then again I can just peel back and then again I can get my roller 
and just roller it onto that base carrier sheet so that it then stays in place. So again, I've got this one here. Now I could, because I've got the outline sliced, I could actually just manually move each of these. So for example, I could get the L, take that off this one, and then place it into the slice of that one. So I have got that option, or I can get my press and seal, put the sticky side on top of my infusible ink, give it a roll, turn it over, remove that carrier sheet. And again, if I feel I need to, I can give that a quick roll. And then I can come in and place that like so. And then just peel back. And then again, I'm just going to use my roller just to make sure that that is nice and secure on that base carrier sheet. that is how you layer infusible ink sheets depending on the type of image that you've got there are going to be videos out on how you do it specifically for an item so specifically for the hat press the mug press the auto press the easy press but i wanted to do this one because i was able to show the different types of designs and how you can change those to be layer suitable but it does open up a whole new world for you. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.